We're going to see if this old girl starts. We'll see if I did a good job on the carburetor. Turn it on. I'm going to turn the fuel on. I'm going to choke it, even though it's a nice day today. Now, I'm not, I'm not getting paid for this, but put a little sea foam in your gasoline. And do not use ethanol in a small engine. If you use ethanol in a small engine or gas with ethanol in it, you will have issues. Do not use ethanol. Totally choke it. See what happens. Oh, yeah. Hi, this is Luke Simons. Today what we have is just a five-horse engine that I just recently rebuilt the carburetor on. I got the engine used, of course, just like most things on this place. Um, <clears throat> the oil on it was somewhat old. I just made this track for it. Why don't you go ahead and zoom up a little bit, Cheyenne? See it? I just took a piece of plywood and two little pieces of scrap board. And I put that on there. If you zoom in a little bit more, Dakota, or Cheyenne, I'm sorry, <laughs> zoom in. Bring yes, the camera on up, baby. Yes, sir. What we have here is um, a hole that I put in here so that the oil could just drain into the pan. Of course, out here we're pretty organic, and I'm uh, a green type of person, so I reuse all used motor oil in many different ways in very, very much fashion of, um, of being green and saving on my carbon blueprint, really no matter what the government says. So, um, what we're going to be doing today is an oil change on this five horse. Um, like I said, I just rebuilt this carburetor. Please zoom in on here, honey. Sir. Zoom on in. I just rebuilt this carburetor and the air filter is clean, but I'm just going to go ahead and show you how to take it off anyways. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, this this uh, air filter, I do not have a new one right now for it. However, um, it's uh, it's going to be acceptable for what we're going to use. First of all, I'll just have you back up again, sweetheart. Sir. We are using a 3 8 wrench. And I'm just going to pop that loose. And try not to drop that plug into the hole or into the oil, because I've done it 72,000 times before. And pop this out so it happens a little faster. Now, <clears throat> I don't run my oil real dark. I just, if it's going to last, you can't run it real dark. Um, what was I saying? The reason I'm popping... Um, well, I'll come back to it. <laughs> okay, so we're just draining our oil. That's all we're doing. Oh, what I was saying was, is you want to run the engine for a couple, three, two minutes, something like that, and then um, um, let it cool down, and after it's cooled down, Go ahead and dump the oil. That way what you're doing is, is letting it drain a little better. Also, if you put a little sea foam into, into the crankcase, which this is going into the crankcase, if you do that, what you're going to do is you're, um, you're going to clean your engine out a little better. Thank you by the rig, way by the rag, Cheyenne. My girls supply me with plenty of old rags. They cut them up for me. This is an old shirt. When I buy a shirt, it's a lifelong engagement. And I wear these things until my wife forbids me to wear them anywhere else. And then my beautiful little girls cut them up in not so square areas, but I've never complained about that. And I use a tar out of these things. If you're not if you're not making your own rags, eh, whatever. That's just being opinionated. All right. Also, I'm going to probably get a lot of flack for this as well. This is name brand Supertech Oil. It is 
fully synthetic oil and I have been using this on this ranch for I don't know how many years it's just crystal beautiful beautiful oil and yes I get flack for using generic oil however last time I checked that was made by I believe don't quote me on that but Valvoline so you know I'm just saving four to five bucks a, um, for oil that size if I don't buy it in bulk okay why don't we zoom in on over here this is how you take your air filter off there's a number of different ways of doing it this is just one Okay, as you can see, the air filter is pretty used, but today we have somewhat of an emergency. I'm going to use it, and there's nothing more permanent than a temporary fix. I can still see quite a bit of light through it. It's going to be used. Put in a new air filter in. Let me zoom in on this a little bit. Of course, when you're putting in a, uh, an air filter, or I'm sorry, a fuel filter, you always want to make sure that the flow is pointing towards which way it's flowing. So, <clears throat> every time I store an engine, or I try, I always keep it to the off position. I, so I let the engine run out of fuel. Otherwise, what happens is, is this. Let's see if you can see this. Oh, right there. Right there is the fuel float. Now that fuel float will gum up and it'll varnish up. And it'll be to the point of no return. Um, then you have to soak it, it's a long process. Of course, I kind of got it down to somewhat of an art. However, it's still very avoidable. So you just shut your fuel off right there. On, off. Your fuel filter will all but run out. A little bit in there now just because I turned it on. But So that's what you do there. And someday I'll show you how to clean them out too. I don't bother buying new gaskets. I make all my gaskets. Get um, kind of a little farm gadget uh, gasket kit. But it works good. Usually the stuff I use is black. But this is good. I went ahead and cleaned the spark plug. I didn't show you that, I guess. But um, very simple process. You just pop this off. And there's your spark plug. When you do that, you always want to air out in there first. Or just clean it up with a screwdriver so you don't drop anything into the engine compartment. Now this is something that will save you 80 bucks easily, no matter where you live, really. And there, of course, is where my air filter goes. Cheyenne, would you take the camera back? Thank you, sweetheart. Okay, what we're going to do is we're just going to take our air filter. We install that. Simple deal. The little tabs go where the tabs go. This is all pretty simple science. And don't kid yourself. It is science. So many times people in the ditch digging aisle are called ditch diggers I guess but without us you wouldn't have McDonald's because I raise beef okay we'll just go ahead and check to see what we got going on here fully choke that as you can see can you see zoom in on that yes, we are all but done dripping and I went ahead and drilled a hole right there so that we don't have this all that oil otherwise it kind of goes all over the place so that's what we do there clean your oil plug off good because that's going to be going back into your crank case pop that in now uh, the local mechanic in the town where I live nearest charges I believe it is $45 to do exactly what I'm doing and this will cost you a grand total of about six bucks. So, some labor there. 
and you don't really need a whole lot of tools. I mean, in the old days, <clears throat> if you didn't have tools, you wouldn't borrow one from your neighbor. Get to know your neighbors. Save you money, and you might just have a better quality of life because of it. I'm kind of a ding-dong. I always like to keep everything square. That way I know if I did the oil change last. Now, how do you know it's full or not? Well, what you do is uh, when you see the oil just barely come out, or even if it comes out a little bit, then you know you have a full oil. This is a good old workhorse. This is a happens to be a 5.5 Briggs and Stratton, or as I call them, Briggs, Briggs and Scrap Iron. What is the most common problem with these things? Well, the most common problem is one reason, one reason alone, and that's leaving gas in over the winter time, and uh, it is a big problem. Like I said, it'll gum you up, and it's going to cost you 80 bucks. One of the main reasons I started doing this myself is because last time I took a, a weed whacker in, actually, it was a five-horse Briggs scrap iron um, system, <clears throat> and um, I thought I winterized it, but turned out I didn't. So I was pretty disappointed. Come spring of the year, I thought I'd get my new auction sale gadget, brand new with the price tag on it, by the way. I believe it was a $449. It's a Swisher. And um, I went to go start it up. My son said, hey, this thing is not starting. I was like, what? I winterized it. No, Papa, you didn't. Great. Well, Messed around with it, messed around with it. So I went and took it in. And uh, I thought it would cost me 35 bucks or whatever. $85 with tax, it was like 90. And I was like, no way. So, did some research. How to rebuild carburetors. That's exactly what we've been doing. Been doing it ever since. And boy, I'm telling you, if you don't know how to do it, I do plan on putting a, a video together for you. But um, very, very simple. You don't have to be a mechanic at all to do this. Otherwise, let me tell you, I wouldn't be doing it. So I'm just going to tighten that up a tish. Just a, maybe just a turn. Oh, and like an idiot, look at here. There's a, I could have filled my oil right here as well. But like John Wayne said, life is hard, but it's harder when you're stupid. And sometimes... I probably fall in the gap of that. So, what you have here is fresh oil in this five horse Briggs and Stratton engine, freshly rebuilt carburetor, and it should be ready for many, many, many years of of uh, of labor. I always run synthetic oil. Some people say. Don't worry about that. It works. Especially in cold climates, it works. And not to just not to even just mention that, but better fuel mileage. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, click below. I think that's where they put them. And say thumbs up. Thank you.